NIST maintains that a single connection on a 13th floor girder, which spanned from column 44 to column 79, failed at the southern end. Heat was said to cause shear studs to fail and then to expand beams attached to that girder, which pushed the girder from its seat. In the first video, we looked at the shear stud aspects and what effect they would have on the stability of the floor system. Next, we examined the feasibility of steel expanding enough to cause the movements required. In the third video, we explained how NIST had misrepresented the connection in question and how it became impossible, when the correct elements were shown, for the girder to be pushed from its seat. Soon after the release of our third video, we were surprised to see that NIST issued an erratum document in which they admitted that they had incorrectly stated that the connection seat was 11 inches and now confirmed that it was in fact 12 inches. A simple typo was offered to explain an error of some significance. At this point, we should highlight that the main contention of the failure was that a temperature of 600 degrees centigrade caused five beams to expand five and a half inches, and that if the seat was 11 inches wide, then the girder would be pushed that five and a half inches and would fall off its seat as it moved halfway across. In fact, at just over halfway, an unsupported flange would fold upwards as the load left the vertical web of the girder. More about this later. Perhaps the maximum temperature of 600 degrees centigrade was carefully selected by NIST to attain the maximum expansion because, according to NIST, beyond 600 degrees centigrade, steel loses strength, causing it to sag, which would render the beam incapable of pushing the girder in any direction. As 5.5 inches is the maximum expansion, then on a 12-inch seat, no failure would occur. Naturally, our ears picked up. Curiously, within the same erratum document was another error, said to be one of transposition rather than an inaccurate or misleading statement. It was claimed that a transposition of the figures had occurred and that the measurement of five and a half inches for the beam expansion ought to have been replaced with the measurement of six and a quarter inches which appears in another section of the report and vice versa. It does seem incredible that such a critical component of the whole report would be overlooked in the proofreading of the draft and then missed again at the final signing off of the report. It's interesting to note that had this second careless error been detected, then the expert investigators would have had to revisit the seat error and also the temperature calculations. In doing so, they would have had to rethink their entire theory, perhaps concluding a different cause of failure, and all because of a typo. But of course, the new figure meant that as the seat was 12 inches, and the expansion now 6 and a quarter inches, then the girder would still be more than halfway, and still fail. Nothing to see here, move along. But hang on, let's look at what temperature would actually be required to cause beams of that size to expand by six and a quarter inches. Our earlier spreadsheet may help here. As you can see, it shows that a temperature of around 763 degrees centigrade would be required. And didn't NIST say that beyond 600 degrees centigrade, the beams would lose strength and sag, rather than push. Perhaps they forgot that when discovering the coincidental second typo. This aspect certainly needs closer examination. In any case, NIST has still not acknowledged the existence of stiffener plates clearly shown on the girder end, shown here. 
Their explanation of the collapse of World Trade Center 7 relies on the girder on the 13th floor falling from its seat. Even at their new walk distance of six and a quarter inches from a 12 inch seat, with stiffeners in place, the flange would not fold at all, but still support the load much further across that wider seat, more like 11 and three quarter inches. We intend to produce a single video to gather all of this information into one place. But for the moment, we trust that this further short probe into the NIST report has provided new information. And we leave you with these questions. Do you find it convenient that two typos occurred, one cancelling out the other? Is it not odd that NIST previously asserted that the maximum temperature possible was 600 degrees centigrade in order to retain enough strength to cause push required to shift the girder from its seat, but subsequently require a temperature of 763 degrees centigrade to expand by the adjusted measurement of six and a quarter inches? Do you find it odd that they still make no mention of the stiffeners shown in all drawings, which would make both the five and a half inches and six and a quarter inches irrelevant, as the girder would still not fail with stiffeners in place? Watch this space. <laughs> 